And I assume you're seeing presentation mode. Yes, we are. Okay, yep. great. All righty. So my uh, my topic is beyond mulch basics. So um, I'll just go ahead and dive right in here. So for today, I, you know, I, I just want to clarify that I am talking about you know the materials that we lay on top of soil and we keep them in place year round. You know, as opposed to you know a temporary mulch or something, a winter mulch that we put on to protect strawberries in the in the winter or something such as that. So kind of a permanent something that's there permanently. Today I'm going to talk about the benefits. Um, we 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 say there's a lot of benefits of mulch. I'll kind of go through those. Um, and what I did is I looked at the science because with extension, our job is to give science based information. So I don't know that there's a lot of new information on the benefits here, but it's just really what do, what does some of the research, what does some of the science show? And kind of based on the different types of mulches, which ones provide the most benefits. I think probably the most interesting part as we've been doing this uh, is the perceived problems. Are these facts or are they actually a misconception? And if they are a fact, how do we avoid them? And then I'll just give a quick pros and cons summary. So the benefits that we often talk about for mulch, again, really nothing new here, but we say use mulch because it conserves that soil moisture. This can be a double-edged sword sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, because if you have a, a client with a heavier clay soil or they tend to overwater, then that mulch is gonna hold that moisture in that soil a little bit longer. And that's what I mean by it can be a double-edged sword. So there have been times I've been visiting with people and found out that the problem was overwatering. So I had to have them move that mulch back and allow that water to evaporate a little quicker and help dry out that soil some. So we talk about how, you know, use mulch so you won't have as many weeds. Um, we know it reduces mechanical injury around those tree trunks, protecting them from the lawn mowers, from those weed trimmers. And maybe we don't talk about that as much, but that they do mitigate those soil temperature extremes. Additional benefits that we may not talk about as much is the effect that mulch can have on soil health and that it improves soil health if we use it correctly. We can do that by reducing compaction because it's buffering water drops from irrigation or rain. It can buffer traffic as well from equipment and foot traffic. Um, it, it increases organic matter, at least some of them will increase organic matter. And that in turn can promote those beneficial animals, earthworms, for example, um, I'll say moles, we might not consider those beneficial, but for the benefit of soil health, uh, they can be. Um, but just I mean, those billions of microorganisms, that, the majority of them that are beneficial in our soil and needed. Uh, it can promote soil aggregation. I'll talk a little bit about how that happens. It improves that soil oxygen recharge. I think you guys know, as we know, that a lot of people don't think about plants, those roots needing soil oxygen. Uh, but in reality, they'd be happy if they had equal amounts of moisture and oxygen. That doesn't happen very often, but that's what a plant would prefer for the best root growth and function. Um, adding soil nutrients as they decompose, at least some of them. Another one that if we use mulch, it can mitigate those diseases. And it can do that by lowering soil splash, which is often how those soil-borne fungi or other pathogens uh, splash up onto those lower leaves and then kind of works their way up the plant. Um, it can mitigate disease by promoting those beneficial organisms in the soil. Those, a lot of those microorganisms I talked about, um, they've been found in science that they can outcompete some of the pathogens that are found in soil. And mulch just it, by helping to reduce plant stress, by doing all uh, gaining all those benefits that I talked about earlier, that reduces plant stress and plants just like people uh, stress plants are more uh, subject to attack by insects as well as diseases. And I'll talk about, you know, if we use mulch, can we use fewer pesticide applications? So those are the benefits we talk about. Um, oh, and just to healthier plants overall because of the enhanced, enhanced root establishment and transplant survival. Studies did find that mulch trees um, will grow 67% better um, uh, than on bare soil. Most of these studies did compare uh, mulch trees to bare soil. Um, but we also know if you could take away that grass competition, um, we usually, in extension, will usually say that benefits in some trees in some cases can establish crisis fast. If they are mulch, then if they're competing with grass 
or just bare soil. Okay, so benefits. That's that's what we say the benefits are. Um, I looked at the science. There's a lot of research articles out there. Um, and not surprisingly, um, the science does back up in most cases everything that we say. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Um, it does somewhat depend on the mulch type. Um, and obviously it depends on the proper use. And you've heard us talk about this um, many, many times that we don't want those mulch volcanoes, deep mulch piled against the tree trunks. They can hold moisture against the base of that tree, could potentially increase um, some of those uh, armillary root rots, those trunk decay. And they make great homes for voles. So voles can live on, in them during the winter and gnaw on those trees and cause some girdling damage. So, you know, the newer term we've been talking about is to use a donut. So, you know, it shouldn't be right up against the trunk or piled against the trunk anyway, about three to four inches deep. And, you know, most of them are about two to four feet wide, but two to four feet wide, we'd love to see them be about six feet or even more wide, at least out to the drip line. We know that's the trees gain the biggest benefit from them. Um, I have a little bit of concern with the term donut. Um, that implies, you know, leaving it very open around the base. And if grass or weeds begin to grow in there, people may go after that with a weed trimmer. And we know that that damages tree trunks pretty severely. And we don't want to have that happening either. So I'm really fine with the, if it's only three to four inches deep, if it's touching the trunk, I'm fine with that. We don't want those weeds growing up and people going after them with weed trimmers either. So let's look a little bit <clears throat> on the science on each of these. So basically, again, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly because the science pretty much backs up what we say. So, but most, most of the types of mulch uh, were better than bare soil. Um, you get soil recharge is dependent on infiltration. And if the soil is covered with mulch, it's not getting compacted. We're not getting that crusting on bare soil, so you're going to get, when it does rain, when we do irrigate, you're going to get better infiltration. It also, mulch will reduce the evaporation, um, and it reduces from the soil, and it reduces that weed growth. Weeds use a lot of soil moisture. If there's a lot of weeds, they're using that soil moisture. So yes, covering up bare soil, you're going to conserve soil moisture. When they looked at the different types of mulch, the organic mulch did prove out to be most effective. Um, stone, rock, crumb, rubber will increase air temperature around the plants themselves, and that increases evapotranspiration. So that kind of lessens that benefit of, um, of, of soil mulch. In, um, excuse me. <laughs> I can't talk this morning. I'll get there. Um, with, when landscape fabric or fine textured mulches, that would be like grass clippings or sawdust, Mulch with waxy components, so that would be bark, um, cardboard in some cases. Uh, we don't use cardboard much in the landscape, but sometimes people use it to establish gardens and so on. Um, but these can become hydrophobic over time. So they actually kind of mat down and they repel that water. So you end up having less infiltrating and more of it kind of running off the mulch. So again, that's what the studies show, the bottom line, organic, organic mulch, at least coarse textured, large pieces of organic mulch tend to not to increase their temperature and they don't become hydrophobic. Weed suppression studies, no surprise. Um, they're initially true of all mulches, will you know, suppress those weeds. You know, you cover up that bare soil, the weed seeds are not getting that sunlight. Uh, there's competition for them, so they're not germinating if they do germinate. Um, they're shaded out, hopefully. So, but the studies show that the time to remove weeds is reduced by about two thirds. That's a lot. And that's why we should use mulch. Um, however, over time, and you've probably seen this, those mineral, uh, mineral mulches like rocks and synthetic mulches, they have issues. Most of them are used on top of a landscape weed fabric. So they don't sink down into the soil. And landscape weed fabrics do not stop all weeds from growing. Yellow nut sedge is a very common weed that will grow right through that landscape fabric. And the other thing I'm sure you've seen is over time that landscape fabric, those little mesh, those holes get filled with soil or sediment to get weed seeds landing on top. They germinate, the weed, the roots become enmeshed in that landscape fabric, and then we can't even hand pull them. 
So we kind of have to resort to using a herbicide in many cases. So that's an issue with those uh, landscape fabrics that's used when you have a synthetic or a mineral mulch. Soil temperature studies. So why is that important for plant roots? Well, plant roots, those fine roots, those fine root hairs that I have a picture here, those are the ones that are most responsible for taking up the majority of water and nutrients for plants. And truly they, they are almost always kind of dying, regrowing, but when you have extreme fluctuations in, in soil moisture as well as soil temperatures, that increases the rate at which those are dying and regrowing, and that can lead to stress for those plants over time. And also on soil temperatures, that's where we can get the soil heaves in the winter. Okay, if the mulch, if it's bare, if it's open, it gets really, really warm in the winter, and then it gets really cold, you can get that soil heaving. Probably more of a problem for younger plants, young step that haven't established good roots yet, um, but that's why we're looking at soil temperature. So again, most mulches cover up that bare soil, they're going to moderate that soil temperature. Um, studies comparing mulch to bare soil, the summer soil temperatures were reduced 8 to 13 degrees Fahrenheit. What the studies found was that coarse organic mulch or any type of coarse mulch was essentially better than a fine textured mulch at mitigating those soil temperatures. So again, even so wood chips versus sawdust, they're both organic, they're both wood, but the wood chips were going to do a better job of it. Not surprisingly, the organic mulch is better than inorganic, so the rocks and so on. Synthetics, you, know, you use geotextile fabrics, any kind of a plastic, again, we hopefully we're not using plastic in our landscapes anymore, uh, but they're still sometimes used in vegetable production and so on, but they obviously were the poorest. So especially a uh, darker colored mulch can increase uh, soil temperatures over time. When they looked at soil health, they were looking at that physical property. Mainly they were kind of looking at the physical part of it was the organic matter content, um, chemicals, so the nutrients, um, and then the biological, all those microorganisms and earthworms and whatnot that I was talking about earlier. So on the soil health studies, um, no surprise, again, mainly true for those organic mulch and pretty much the only one that improves that soil health. All mulches will mitigate those water drops to help relieve the soil compaction from, from rainfall, from irrigation. Um, but only organic mulch will improve soil structure, so that soil aggregation um, and increase nutrients in the soil. Not, so, not a surprise. So and that it does that by increasing organic matter content and promoting those soil microbes and so on. And so what's, and again, in this picture, when we talk about soil aggregation, okay, you can see here, this is soil aggregation. You, have, you don't want a real fine, powdery, sifty soil. Um, you, uh, we also don't want it to be too cloddy, um, but this is a, right here is what we call soil aggregation. So just more pore space for those roots to grow, for water to move through and excess water to drain away, et cetera. And that's what I mean by soil aggregation. You probably knew that, but I'll explain. So just a little bit, since I talk about the soil animals and microbes, what are their functions? Why is it so important to promote those? Um, well, they're responsible for nutrient cycling, so decomposition, so breaking down that dead plant material, those dead roots, um, and then we, again, recycling that, re releasing those nutrients. Um, the aggregation. So a lot of these, to get that soil aggregation, one, uh, one thing that happens is they need soil glues and it's these microorganisms that actually produce those soil glues. Okay, globulin is one, ex one example of a soil glue um, that soil microorganisms produce and is needed for that aggregation of those soils. They stimulate plant growth. Um, one example would be mycorrhizae that we talk about quite a lot. Mycorrhizae help plants in being able to take up nutrients better and, and suppressing the pests. As I said earlier, um, studies have proven, have shown that those beneficial microorganisms can outcompete the pathogenic ones. And organic mulch is the only one that will promote this. The reason being is 
microbes need access to the nutrition. They get their nutrition from the organic matter as they're de breaking it down and decomposing it, they're getting nutrition. Um, and they need water and they need oxygen in the soil. So they're found, these microbes are found to concentrate near surfaces of organic matter and around roots. So when we mulch, add mulch to the soil, it's, as it's decomposing, it'll slowly add organic matter to that soil over time. Um, if it's organic and if it's not sitting on top of a landscape fabric um, and root growth is promoted. So we're just providing what's needed for those soil microbes as well as earthworms and so on to increase. Inorganic and synthetic will actually have actually been shown to harm and reduce microorganisms. And you lay down that landscape fabric and I sound like I'm very anti rocks and stones. Personally, I am, <laughs> but I'm just showing that the science backs up that they're not as healthy for plants. I talk about that being, they're, be, they're people focused. Okay? The rocks and, and are people focused, they're aesthetically, they like them, they don't have to replace them as often, but they're not plant focused. And so that's what I will share with, with people when they ask about different types of mulches. It's still bottom line, it's their choice to choose which one they want to go with. But the inorganic science clearly shows that the inorganic and synthetic ones will harm and reduce these soil animals and microbes that are so important to a healthy soil. So another thing with soil health studies that they looked at was reduction of salt and pesticides in soil. So in, it, in mulch can do that it, if it reduces evaporation. When a moisture is evaporating from soil, it is leaving salt behind in the soil. And by reducing that e evaporation, that is one way we can mitigate that and reduce those soil salts. Um, increased soil moisture helps to dilute salts. Mm -hmm. That's a recommendation we have in the spring after you have, uh, we're using those de-icing salts. We will sometimes say to flood irrigate an area next to a sidewalk if you've had issues with salt buildup in there from the de-icing salts. And the soil health studies improve that, that microbial population that I just talked about, and they also increase down in, increase the breakdown, uh, the rate of breakdown of pesticides in the soil. Not enough to prevent them from working for us, um, but from lasting too long in the soil. And there's some, they have looked at studies because of issues of lead in soils, especially in some of the larger urban areas. Um, they have looked at, are they effective in removing heavy metals from soil? And they did find that there is some mitigation here with certain types of mulches, such as mulch made out of uh, arbor, arborvitae chips were found to help reduce levels of metal, heavy metals like lead in soil. Disease mitigation studies, again, organic mulch proved to be best. Um, in part, because all of them will reduce that soil splash. Rocks, maybe not, because you're not getting, anytime you cover up the soil, you're going to reduce that soil splash, okay, up onto the lower leaves. So they can all do that. The organic mulches were best simply because they reduce plant stress more so, and whereas rocks, they increase plant stress by increasing the heat around them. The other thing, I think I skipped over, but they found on the soil moisture, that initially the, there'll be more, more moisture underneath those plants, but geotextile fabrics and rocks especially, over time it becomes extremely dry beneath there. And a lot of people don't notice it. They're not aware of it because how often do we pull back? It's hard to pull back that rock and that landscape and look underneath there so they don't realize. So for clients that have this mulch in their landscape, we really should be encouraging them to use the screwdriver task to push it into that soil to see if it's dry um, because this, the science shows us, research shows that it becomes very abnormally dry underneath there eventually. A lot of it, a lot of that water can be repelled. Okay, so I know that was uh, qu uh, quick and fast, mm -hmm. but I wanted to get to the perceived problems. Are these facts or not? And these are the problems um, I'm going to discuss. You've probably heard them. Somebody say, well, I don't want to use wood chip mulch in my landscape because I'll get termites. It'll attract termites. Um, you might have heard, um, I think nitrogen deficiency is another one that I hear often. Um, I don't want to use organic mulch because it's going to take nitrogen away from my good plants. 
So let's look at let's look at the studies, the science behind some of these uh, problems or perceived problems. So will mulch attract termites? Okay, it's a misconception. So wood mulches do not attract termites. So that's implying that if you put mulch there, then they're going to right away they're going to search out and they're going to be attracted to that wood mulch. The termites in Nebraska are subterranean termites, so they nest in the soil. They do not nest in the wood or the structure that they're feeding on. They nest in the soil. Okay, so you have to have a nest nearby first. Now, could you possibly, um, could wood mulch right up against a building um, possibly lead to termites using that to gain access to the building? Yes, we can't say that that wouldn't happen if there's a nest nearby in the area, okay? But subterranean termites, they'll, you know, they'll swarm now and again. You know, they form winged adults that will swarm and establish new sites. Are they gonna be attracted to the wood chip mulch if you have it there? No, um, but it could help them access the wood. And that's why we'll sometimes say, if people are concerned, keep it about six to 12 inches from the building. Mm -hmm. I don't think most of us may be on this call. I should I should only speak for myself. It's not a concern for me, but I do fluff it up. Um, I make sure it's not wood on wood. You know, it's more wood against the cement foundation, that type of thing. Studies showed there was actually more termite colonies beneath gravel mulch than wood mulch, um, which I found to be odd, but that's what the studies show. Um, termites, this was interesting. Termites are highly attracted to cardboard. I included that in there because people are some people are starting to use cardboard as a means of probably more for establishing a vegetable garden, um, but there's this concept of lasagna gardening and people are starting to turn to cardboard. Uh, and that's why they've been studying it and that's why I'm including it in some of this, even though it's maybe not a common landscape one. Um, some mulches like like thuo, which would be overbitey, actually were found to repel some insects like termites. Okay, can are you guys is is my bar covering up for you the rest of you? Do you no, see? we can see everything. Okay, good. Is I get it's just me. It's just my bar. Okay, I know what it says. So can pathogens in wood mulch from an infected tree be transmitted? And this is a question that I do receive from people. Um, people will say, well, if I get wood chip mulch from, say, a, um, a scotch pine that had pine wilt, um, will it tra be transmitted to, say, an Austrian pine or another scotch pine? Okay. So what the science shows is that's very, very unlikely to happen. Okay. It could happen if the mulch is incorporated into the soil, which we don't do. Again, I was talking about mulch that we place on the surface. So they did find some potential, even though it was very, very low for transmittal, if it was incorporated into the soil or if it was piled against that trunk. So again, another reason not to pile mulch against trunk. Again, you need a very set, specific set of conditions. Um, it has to be a pathogen. It may, often it has to be the same genus or species of tree. Um, the pathogen has to survive in that wood mulch, which a lot of times it doesn't because it may get too dry or something. So it's just the chance of it happening is very, very slim. We can't say it would never happen because they did show in these cases in soil incorporation or piling against the trunk. That sometimes it could. Um, overall, mulching, especially with organic mulch, improves this plant health, which reduces stress. And that reduces that risk of those plants being attacked by opportunistic pathogens. And those are the ones that attack stressed plants. So armillaria root rot, Phytophthora root rot, those are two great examples of pathogens, opportunistic pathogens. Now there's nuisance fungi that can create a concern for homeowner. These are not pathogens, they don't attack the tree, but here's what I mean by nuisance fungi. Okay. I don't know if anybody has seen this. I have seen it in Columbus um, once or twice. So that's not very often but there are fungi that will grow on organic mulch. And one is artillery fungus, bird's nest fungus. And what these do, especially the artillery fungus, okay, will shoot out their spores and they will hit the siding and land on the siding. They stick to the siding. And once they dry, they're 
almost impossible to remove. So again, as I said, a nuisance, not harmful to the plants. Um, the homeowner doesn't like their siding to look like this, but um, it doesn't hurt the siding otherwise. So the other nuisance fungi are the slime molds that we often see growing on that wood chip mulch, uh, dog vomit slime mold. There's the stink horn. These are just ugly. They sometimes attract flies. They do, they do smell a little bit, but they do cause concern to homeowners. You know, if that fungus is growing there, is it going to attack my plants? None of these are pathogenic. They're not going to attack plants. Are they going to hurt anything? They do not hurt anything. So usually we'll say scrape them away, hose them off, whatever. But yes, they can be promoted by organic mulch, especially wood chip mulch. So will mulch affect soil pH? This is the question we most commonly get uh, after a pine tree is removed. Somebody will remove a pine tree and, and then I'll get the call. Well, I had a pine tree. I understand I need to do something to the soil before I plant anything there because now my soil is too acid. So that's probably where this question most commonly comes in. But what the studies show is mulch placed on the surface does not affect the pH of the underlying soil. Okay. So changing pH requires an amendment. Often, you know, in Nebraska, we tend to have higher pH soils, so we're, we sometimes will recommend adding sulfur. Okay, so it would take pounds of sulfur um, incorporated into the soil, okay, and about a year to change that pH, um, and then over time, it'll probably revert back anyway, which is why we don't often recommend that. So, but mulch itself will not have an effect on soil pH. Right at that surface, that very, very surface, it might have a very minor effect, but most of the roots are down deeper in the soil. I usually, when people ask me that question about pine trees and their soil being too acid, I'll say, I wish. <laughs> I wish it would raise, lower our pH a little bit because our, our landscape soils in Nebraska tend more often to have a neutral to a alkali pH. And it would be nice if we could acidify them because most plants prefer a slightly acidic soil. So again, due to the soil volume, the buffering capacity of soil, uh, pH tends to remain constant. Can mulch leach chemicals that could harm or kill established plants? So one thing, uh, one concern is that allelopathy, allelopathy is where plants uh, such, such as walnut, that Elizabeth talked about earlier, um, where they can release the chemical juglones that can be potentially harmful to other uh, other plants. Um, there's We know some about allelopathy. We don't know a lot about it. We don't know which plants are necessarily alle allelopathic to other plants. But again, yeah, they're not too concerned about it. It's very unlikely, again, because you have it on the surface. So if you were to take that wall, those walnut chips and you were to incorporate it into soil, um, my understanding is most of that juglones comes from the roots of living walnut trees, but the chance of this happening is very unlikely. Might affect seed germination right at that interface between the soil and mulch, um, if, there's, if there's an effect at all. Um, and this could be beneficial because it could um, affect weed seed germination as well. Again, if incorporated into soil, it could affect root establishment. But we, we're talking about mulch that we place on the surface, not mulch that we incorporate into soil. Does organic mulch cause a nitrogen deficiency? Again, it's possible right at the interface. So, or if it or if that organic mulch is incorporating into soil. What happens is those microorganisms will use nitrogen in the soil to decompose that plant material, and that can take nitrogen then away from our plants and potentially lead to an, at least a temporary nitrogen deficiency. Um, but again, we're talking about mulch that we place on the surface. So may it may inhibit that weed seed survival. Um, we don't typically use wood mulch in long enough in a vegetable garden to cause a problem. Um, but if, if you did, for some reason, those annual flower seeds, it may inhibit that germination right at the seed surface but not enough that it's that we're concerned about it. Organic mulch can increase nutrients as it decomposes. When they look at the studies with organic mulch, it either increased, again, because it's on the surface, so it's decomposing 
it increases those nutrients. It's it's when those earthworms and whatnot are kind of slowly incorporating it into soil over time. So so in some cases it this research showed that it increased nutrients. In some cases it had no effect. In a few cases it decreased it at least right at that interface. Is mulch a fire hazard? Elizabeth did talk about this some, but I included it. Um, and again, crumb rubber was most flammable. It ignited the easiest and it burned the longest. It was the most flammable of all the mulches tested. Fine textured mulch were more likely to ignite, sawdust, dry needles, then coarse textured mulch. Uh, conifer chips, conifer wood chips were more flammable. I think Elizabeth talked about this as well because they have higher levels of resin in them, which is what makes them more uh, flammable than hardwood ch chips. They can all burn in the right conditions. So again, coarse textured mulch like wood chips were the least flammable of all those tested. Good idea to keep mulch moist. I'm not sure why I threw this in here because we don't really use flamethrowers and we should not use flamethrowers in our landscapes. But I know there are some acreage owners or some farm owners um, where flamethrowers are used. You know, gosh, with the dry conditions we have, with the risk of wildfires, first of all, we shouldn't be using them. Um, but in wetter conditions, if they are used, just be very careful near mulch. Don't use them near mulch. If you must or insist on it, moisten the mulch first. Can mulch be a source of allergens? Okay, I included this because as, you know, as grounds maintenance people, people that work with city parks, people that works at lands landscape, our audience that we promote cohort to, um, sometimes are working with these large deep piles of mulch. Our clients are not working with them, um, but, but we are, you are. So deep piles of mulch, that mold will grow naturally in there. A lot of times you might see that gray, um, kind of a powdery, dusty when you stir it up. Okay, so molds grow naturally. We stir up those mold sores, <clears throat> spores, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're handling it. So, and that has been shown to lead to what we call organic dust syndrome. People that have asthma, irritated, can lead to bronchitis, uh, something called farmer's lung. Arborists have been hospitalized after working with around deep piles of mulch because of um, farmer's lung, because of asthma or other sources. So just FYI, if you're working around these, uh, PP, PPE, personal protective equipment, consider a pollen mask are proven to be 100% effective against these mold spores, um, as well as the N95 respirators. So PPE, take care of yourself when working around deep piles of mulch. Other concerns, um, questions that we get, will mulch bring in weed seeds? Yes, it certainly can. Um, summer hay mulch, uh, straw mulch that we don't typically use in our landscape, but even some of those wood chip mulches and so on, and even rocks, even rocks brought in could have weed seeds in them, depending on where we get them. So yes, they can, but they also help to uh, shade it out and reduce weeds and weed growth. And just know the source and be careful of the source. Will mulch lower soil oxygen? Yes, especially if it is too deep, which is why we often recommend that three to four inches, um, or if it's too fine. When we use sawdust, when we use grass clippings, um, they can mat down um, oxygen that recharge. Oxygen moving into that soil on a regular basis can reduce that low, reduce soil oxygen. If it's too deep and it keeps the soil too moist, okay? The water is going to displace the oxygen in the pores, and that's another way, way that it can be reduced. Is mulch poisonous to pets? Only cocoa mulch um, is known to be poisonous to pets um, and, and has actually poisoned some dogs. So that's the only one that we need to worry about. Um, let me get out of cocoa holes. I don't, it, it's available. I mean, most, especially at some of our box stores when people order things online, it is available. I and mean, people like to use cocoa mulch because it smells like chocolate. It smells good. Mm -hmm. But it is known to be toxic to, to pets, especially dogs. That sour mulch. Okay? When, you, when you're working with mulch and it has a sour smell to it, um, we call that sour mulch. Uh, and it, when placed around plants, um, it has been shown to cause chlorosis in those plants, scorch, leaf scorch, where the edges of the leaves turn brown. Um, in some cases, it even caused plant death of young plants. 
and especially if that sour mulch was right up against their stems. So chemical contamination. So I talked a little bit about allelopathy, but people are also concerned about other things. What about recycled treated wood? Most of our treated wood today or preserved wood today um, is no longer treated with the CCA, copper, chromium, arsenates. Um, probably over 20 years ago, this was banned. But prior to 20 years ago, the green wood that we saw was treated with uh, copper, chromium, arsenates. And sometimes people, some wood is the railroad ties and whatnot with creosote. So in the studies, um, they found that all, if you use these as a mulch, they have been found to contaminate soil. Is it at a level that can be harmful to plants? Maybe, maybe not, um, but they do find that it can contaminate the soil. So even though it's been off the market for 20 years at CCA, we still might have CCA treated preserved wood out there that's now being recycled. So another concern homeowners have are dyes. Do I dare use dyed mulch? Is it going to harm me handling it? Is it going to harm my plants? Is it going to hurt the soil? So most dyes are created from uh, vegetables and water-based dyes are natural pigments found in coal and iron. So we're not concerned and the science hasn't showed an issue with the dyes themselves, but recycled wood is often used for dyed mulch. Okay. So that recycled wood, um, what is the source? Where did it come from? The reason it's used for dyed mulch is because it's so dry, so it absorbs that dye very readily and very quickly. So what, what was the source of the recycled wood? Could it be wood that was treated with CCA? Then, you know, we really can't tell people, ah, there's no issue at all. There's a potential for some issue. Crumb rubber, they're looking at crumb rubber. Crumb rubber is mainly what's used on our soccer fields, football fields, children's playgrounds. Um, the, the rubber mulch that's sold in, you can buy it by the bag full, is usually larger pieces, but it's still rubber, okay? But they're looking a little bit more closely at the crumb rubber because it is used where children are, are falling on it and playing on it and, and whatnot, and they wanted to know, could it be dangerous? So initial research shows that toxic materials can leach from crumb rubber as it degrades, um, the, all the advertisement says use rubber as a mulch because it will never decompose. You never have to replace it. But it has been found that it can degrade. There are bacteria in the soil that can actually degrade crumb rubber, and that can cause it to um, release some toxic materials that could possibly affect plant growth. Um, the bigger concern is the effect, again, on um, children um, or football players or soccer players that are out there. Herbicides. Yeah, mainly, this is mainly an issue with grass clippings. So it's very important if you're using grass clippings for any reason, you know, what herbicides are being applied. Um, if you're applying herbicides in a landscape and you know the homeowners are using those grass clippings for mulch in some way, you know, reading that label like we all always should. Read the label, um, it'll tell you, uh, you know, do, it might say do not use, don't ever use grass clippings from a mown lawn as mulch in say an edible in a garden, for example. Um, it may say you can use them after a period of time. It may not say anything. If it doesn't say anything, we'll usually tell people, I tell people to wait two or three mowings at least um, before using those grass clippings. Okay, mulch types. Just a little bit again, uh, just kind of more of a review on the pros and cons. So remember, mulch is not regulated, okay? So when people advertise it, they promote the positives. Mm -hmm. They don't promote the negatives. That's good marketing, right? Promote the positives, not the negatives. And I think, so you, you've heard as I go through this, especially the first part on the benefits, mm -hmm. where in general, all the different types of mulches will provide the basic benefits. Mm -hmm. But there are some negatives uh, to some of the some of the mulches. So the ideal mulch would be economical, you know, readily available, easy to apply, easy to remove. Um, if somebody decides they don't want landscape fabric and rocks, it's not easy to remove. Um, it stays in place. Okay, that's um, sometimes an issue with our wood chip mulch. It can float, it can float away, it can blow away, um, and that is a reason why people sometimes don't want to use it. 
um, supplies organic matter to the soil. Or organic mulch is the only one that can do that. It's free of noxious weeds and pests. Uh, we can try our best to make sure it isn't and aesthetically acceptable. So each has the pros and cons. This is probably more of a review, but some examples of organic mulch, wood chips, shredded chunk bark, pine needles, grass clippings, corn cobs, sawdust. These are probably the most readily available. Um, soybean mulch is another one that's becoming available and becoming popular. So again, the, the pros, organic mulch, it's most effective at providing the benefits, all the benefits overall. And it is best for plant health. If people want to be plant focused, they'd go the organic route. If they want to be people focused. Um, I can understand them using the landscape fabric and the rocks. It's an aesthetic thing, um, but it's not as best for our soil or our plants. They're the only type to improve soil organic. They're less likely to limit infiltration. Um, sawdust, grass clippings can mat down and become hydrophobic and possibly limit infiltration in some cases. But the science shows that, again, those geotextile fabrics and rocks, it becomes very, very, very dry eventually underneath those unless the homeowner is careful to be irrigating uh, slowly so the water can infiltrate. They may increase, have no effect, or decrease nutrients. They're probably the least expensive, and they're often free. The, the cons of organic, uh, and this is a common complaint, well, I have to replace them every two, three years. They can move out of beds. Use uh, install rain gardens <clears throat> instead of uh, berms because they're going to move off of a berm, uh, a flat bed. Uh, that's just kind of an aside on my part. Um, but in working with rain, I've been doing some work with rain gardens, and when they fill up with water, that mulch floats to the top, but it's in a basin, it's in a bowl. <laughs> so, and when the water disappears, the mulch just goes back into place. We we can see it floating out of there, but we rarely do. And you had to be careful um, about CCA treated woods and that old preserved wood, um, newspapers, cardboard, sawdust tissues, cardboard, again, waxy cardboard, it can repel. It takes longer to decompose than we think. Sawdust is just so fine, reduces oxygen, mats down, reduces infiltration. Um, same thing with newspaper. Newspaper is, it's a sheet. Anytime you have a sheet, cardboard, newspaper, a newspaper is going to break down probably more quickly than cardboard. But remember, if it's a sheet, initially it's going to repel that water. Inorganic minerals, pebbles, lava rock, gravel, um, they provide most of the benefits in general. They rarely break down. They don't need replenishment um, very often. They're more stable in wind. They provide a good soil armor. So if you have a downspout, for example, that's directed onto your landscape bed, you're going to have a little better soil armor. You're not going to get that soil erosion. The cons of inorganic mulch, um, they'll work into soil unless you use a landscape fabric. They do not improve soil health. Over time, they can reduce or harm soil health. They increase temperatures around plants to increase the evapotranspiration of moisture um, and then just leading to stress. We, can be, we have put around rubber mulch, we have put thermometers down and it can be 120 degrees or higher around those plants. And plants at very hot temperatures, those higher temperatures, plants do not photosynthesize. So we're having an impact on um, just even photosynthesis. And rocks can become projectiles when mown. Inorganic, the synthetic, rubber, geotextile, again, the pros, they provide the basic benefits, but they have many, many cons. They do not improve soil health, and they're likely to harm it. They tend to create those unnaturally dry soils. Eventually, you can have those weed issues, those weeds growing through the weed fabric, or just germinating on top of it, and the roots becoming enmeshed in that fabric. They increase those temperatures around plants, and, the, and they can be difficult to remove. And when you do remove them, you know, damaging roots often. So just another point on landscape fabrics. Um, Weeds will grow on top or push through. They allow rodents like voles. Voles love to be underneath that landscape fabric. <laughs> so they can increase populations of voles around plants. Hot air can get underneath the, that landscape fabric and uh, you know, cause an increase in those fine root hairs and root dieback. 
It impedes the water movement of water and oxygen into soil. Organic mulches, if used on top, will slide off, like the picture here in the in the bottom. Um, they can they can constrict and girdle the stems of trunks. So in this picture, you show here where they actually are slit with a knife and they're pulled back to prevent that from happening. And removal, when you do want to remove them, um, you're going to damage a lot of those entwined roots. You can see those roots or feel those roots being pulled off. Um, in the long run, removing it, replacing it with mulch. I don't know how many homeowners or your clients would even be willing to do that. Um, but removing, if it is, that is something that is done, um, removing that mulch, putting mulch there is, in the long run is going to help the plant more than the loss of those roots on the surface when you remove it. So, anybody ever heard of mulch glue? <laughs> Anchor walk. So, this is a new product. Um, I was at a session. I was at a session on mulch um, this past summer, um, listening to an expert talk about some of the research. That's part of the reason I chose to do this because I attended a uh, attended a session from a researcher who had done quite a bit of research. And somebody asked her, what about mulch glue? And she had never even heard of it, surprisingly. So we kind of did a little, checked into it a little bit. It is a real thing. When I was uh, teaching in Omaha, um, a lady came up to me afterwards and apologized. She goes, I thought that was a joke. She had gotten up and gone and used the restroom or something. She goes, I'm sorry I left. I literally thought you were joking. Well, I'm not joking. These are products. You go online and you'll find all these products. So mulch glue. So what's a concern homeowners have? My glue's going to float away. It's going to blow away. It's going to move off site. And so that's uh, what they're marketing to. But there's zero research on this. There's zero research on the effectiveness of mulch, um, the safety of it, um, and its effect on the environment. And the concerns, you know, again, there's no data, but concerns we would have with it is, you know, what is the effect on water uptake? You know, literally what I think of this, you know, if you have a layer of glue that's sticking together, for some reason, peanut brittle comes into my mind. And that infiltration, you're just going to create, if it truly does do what it says it's doing, and you're gluing those mulch pieces together, you're creating um, an impervious surface, essentially. So you're not going to get that water infiltrating. It's going to be hydrophobic and running on. Um, you're not going to get oxygen moving down into the soil if it actually does what it says it is going to do. They, there are safety data sheets. Um, if, you, if you Google mulch glues or any of these products and you look for a safety data sheet, um, I found a couple of them. And the signal word was danger. Caution is the lowest one. Most of our general use pesticides um, have the caution word, uh, or caution, okay? And the signal word for us on these mulch glues was danger. Uh, that, that's because they could cause skin irritation. Mm -hmm. It says they could cause serious eye damage. It says it's harmful if swallowed. So personal protective equipment was recommended using gloves, using eye goggles, and so on. So I don't know how many people, when they purchase this and they use it, if they do, um, would read the label enough uh, to, to actually use that PPE um, or obtain a safety data sheet for it. So... I think for now, um, extension would be, we're, we're probably going to err on the side of, yeah, probably wouldn't use this. Too many concerns with it. Um, I did have, when I taught this in Lincoln, uh, there were two ladies there that had worked for a previous landscape company, and they did actually try this and use it. They said it was very messy to work with. It was very difficult to work with. And in their opinion, it took a lot of the product, it was expensive. Um, and in the long run, we never felt it really did have an impact. It didn't do what it was supposed to do anyway. So <laughs> bottom line on mulch use, um, I'm going to say to my co-workers, um, since we're a little bit ahead of schedule, I don't know if Sarah's on yet, but I don't know if somebody wants to reach out to Sarah and let her know we're running ahead of schedule. Thanks, Elizabeth. I know Elizabeth finished a little earlier and when you're talking to a computer, hopefully I wasn't rattling on too fast or too quick. So, but anyway, we are ahead of schedule, which isn't always a bad thing. So anyway, bottom line on mulch use, again, the correct use provides many of those benefits and outweighs the negatives. You know, the potential that, yeah, maybe, maybe this could be a 
a perceived problem or it could be a problem, um, but only under specific conditions and the negatives far outweigh the negatives, or the positives far outweigh the negatives. But it's one of the best and simplest ways that we can protect not only plants in our landscape, but protect soils and help even improve soils if we use the organic mulch. So really it's the incorrect use that's responsible for most of those issues, like our mulch volcanoes that we keep telling people not to use. Right mulch, right way. Um, again, place it on uncompacted moist soil. Um, in one of the first slides we talked about um, Mulch on top of bare soil mitigates those raindrops uh, and irrigation drops to maybe help slowly reduce or prevent compaction. But if you put this, they did do studies, if you place mulch on top of compacted soil, it will not lead to that soil becoming uncompacted. Maybe if it's organic mulch, maybe over the years because of improving organic matter, but that's a very, very slow process with mulch placed on top. So if you have a compacted soil, um, it, you should take steps such as tillage or whatnot to relieve that compaction before you plant, before you put the mulch on top of the soil. And then it can, lead, it, it can help reduce compaction. Not too deep, coarse, two to four inches around woody plants, one to two inches around perennials as a general rule. About six inches away from plant stems, you know, this is herbaceous plants. We use it in vegetable gardens and so on. We should stick with this. Um, I don't have as a, a big of a concern on large established trees if it's only two to four inches deep, if it is touching that trunk again, so we don't get weeds growing up and people using a weed trimmer. Um, rake it now and then. If it's organic mulch, you want to rake it now and then to kind of break up water shedding or hydrophobic la layers. Mm. Organic mulch provides the most benefits. Mm. You should apply mulch to moist soil, okay? And it's a good idea to water organic mulch. What I mean by a watering it after applying, okay, we wanna apply mulch to moist soil. We don't wanna apply it to dry soil. Um, but what I meant by watering organic mulch after applying is that will just help it to settle down um, and maybe it be less likely to blow away if you get a really high wind immediately after applying it. So any comments or questions for me? You always go through your presentation faster because when you're doing it live, you're stopping to interact and ask questions and answer questions and so on. Here's Sarah, perfect timing. <laughs> 